USB Type-C is the future, but USB Type-C can be also very confusing. This is a USB Type-C cable that is able to run 100 watts of power, but this is USB 2 cable, so if you need data transfer speed, it's very slow. This cable here, it has capability of sending 10 gigabits data, but unfortunately it only can give you 60 watts of power. So what is the best choice? The cable in front of me has none of this limitation. Actually, it's a groundbreaking cable, let's say like this. The manufacturer sent me this cable for review and it came at the right time because I have a very fast power bank. Actually, I think it's the fastest you can get right now and I needed a faster cable. So let's see what this is about. This USB Type-C cable has a data transfer speed of 40 gigabits per second. This is the fastest you can get on the market right now. It can transfer video signal 8K at 60 Hz and it can charge at 240 watts. The fact is we don't even have today devices that can charge at 240 watts with Type-C. I'm still waiting for them to get on the market. So this cable probably will be good for years to come. In today's video, I want to present you the quality of the cable, how it feels and so on, how are the materials, and then we will do a charging speed test with 140 watts, because this is the fastest you can get at this moment. I will also try to use it with my fastest SSD that I have, a USB Type-C SSD. If you are interested in this cable, you find Amazon links below and this is how the product is named. You can see it on the screen, but I will also leave in the description all this kind of detail. At this moment, you can get it with 15% reduction from 37 euros. This is in Germany. I will have also global links to Amazon and uh, you can find here also the cable length. It's 1.8 meters and I think in general this cable has very positive reviews and I'm also very happy with it. If you are surprised by the price, actually all these products in this category of power are priced in this region. Unfortunately, this is very new technology. This cable has even chips inside to tell the chargers how fast you can uh, use this cable with because you cannot play with 240 watts. This needs to be reliable information what the cable is transmitting. So this is why all the cables in this power range it will be at the same price level. What I really like is the quality of the materials. The connector is very solid, it's metal and this braiding is done with textile. It's very nice on the touch and it's very flexible, yeah. Why I'm mentioning this is because I also bought another cable just to test it out and even though this is braided, this uh, is a plastic braiding, yeah. It's kind of plastic material and uh, it's very hard. You can even scratch yourself in this braiding. It doesn't feel nice at all, unfortunately, even though uh, the capabilities may be the same. It's not the same feeling in the hand and this is also not very flexible compared to this cable. The other cable that I used was an anchor cable and unfortunately this is too short. This is around one meter and um, yeah, this is interesting but it will not get you out of all situations and unfortunately you see that this cable is not so good protected as the driver genius one but this is still at the same price. So for the same price on the driver genius side you get more length and you get more quality materials. In my opinion this is really important. I want now to do the first test and this would be charging with 140 watts an anchor power bank that can charge with 140 watts. Let's first try to charge with a regular cable. This is one cable that has a display here and you can see a regular cable normally is charging with 100 watts if it's a good cable let's put it like this and yeah at this moment we are charging the battery you see with 95 96 watts the battery is also reporting 93 watts at this moment because there is a bit of loss on the cable and on the connection and so on let's see what the driver genius cable can do because this can go up to 240 watts so you see that the speed is rising and it's 
overpassing the 100 watts limit at this moment I have here 122 watts and just to tell you the truth the battery is telling the cable how much power it can handle so depending on the percentage charge of the battery it can actually draw more or less power this is how these cables are working and you can actually see from the wall we are getting 136 watts this is pretty close to 140 watts giving the losses that you have in the cables and so on i think this is pretty impressive because this power bank will be charged in around 40 minutes and this is a big power bank i cannot wait to see laptops that will be able to use this kind of technology and i will be only using this cable because you don't need another one only if you need multiple ones if you have multiple devices but this one will be covering all your needs in terms of uh, charging devices in terms of data transfer and so on let's now move on to the speed test with an ssd that i have for uh, my macbook pro i have now connected the ssd to the macbook pro this is an m1 max and uh, let's see what the speed tests are here from what i know an intel device can even have better speeds but let's see what this will do i think this is the maximum i've seen on this ssd actually my other cables were giving me around 700 megabits but you see here we are getting 900 megabits write and read without problems i would say this cable is more than enough to drive the maximum out of this ssd I don't have an 8K display because I would like to also test the video capabilities of this but if this test is telling the truth you see here it says that on this speed you could actually write video at 8K DCI 60 so probably this is good enough for proof that you can run 8K through this cable the last test that I want to do with this cable is powering a 4K display over usb type c from my macbook so i simply plugged in the cable and let's see if the cable is able to power the display and also send the signal okay so the monitor started i want to give him full brightness let's see if the power is enough for full brightness and it's working properly just to check that everything is running fine i went here into this place I go to display settings and I select the external display and we can see here it can run at 4K. This is the biggest resolution display that I can test here today. I don't have an 8K one, but I'm sure the 8K one will also work if you have one. What else can you do with this cable? For sure you can charge your MacBook Pro or any other laptop that is using USB Type-C. No matter how fast the speed of that device is, this cable will be good enough if you have a good enough charger because this is the problem at the moment you won't find chargers faster than 140 watts macbook pro 16 is using 140 watts uh, cable with magsafe and this is the other charger that i was able to find with 140 watts as soon as we will have better and faster charges i will put this cable again to the test but i think it has proven that everything that I tested worked nice so far. I also want to order a cable tester from PowerZ. This company is creating very nice small devices where you can test the capabilities of the cables by simply plugging in the cables because that device can read the chips on this and it can tell you how much power you can give to this cable. On a final note, this is now my favorite charging cable even though I have other capable charging cables this one is the best in terms of feel and quality and so on uh, and also the length is quite nice so I will be using this and I also recommend you buying this especially if you can find it discounted as you can see it is now on Amazon if you guys have any other ideas how I can test better the cables maybe you let me know we could use maybe some thermal camera or if you have any ideas I would be more than happy to test it out for you. Thank you very much for watching. Till next time, have a good one.